Hi, welcome to Odyssey of Ascension. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> this is Roxanne, and it is Q&A day. <clears throat> we have like 35 questions. So I don't think we're going to get them all done today, so this will be a two-parter. Uh, we're going to do as many as we can today, and then we'll do the rest on Friday. But uh, we have quite a few questions, and we will definitely get to them all. So thank you all for tuning in, and let's go to the Q&A from the viewers. Okay, good. I got through that. I did good. <laughs> <laughs> Cut! No. Good job. Good job. Okay. Stay by. <laughs> Greetings once again to the collective. This is Osiphius. We bid you a good day. Hmm. It is right. It is time for the idea of the Q&A from you, the viewers. We appreciate your participation in this. All of these idea questions are for those who all tune in to reflect back to themselves. It is most certainly not for just the individual who brought the table to the, let's say, plate. Hmm. Table. Brought the play to the table? Huh, yeah. Brought the question to the table. Very good, Roxy. All right, let us begin. Rita, show's yours. Question number one. This mm. is from Tomek H. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, my dog got hit by a car and died. Mm -hmm. If reality is a perfect mirror, why did I create this event? And if there are an infinite number of realities, why can't I shift to a reality where he is still alive? Also, is there a link with my nosebleeds and pressure in my sinuses the day before he got hit in the head? Sorry for the melodrama. Hmm, no problem on the melodrama. Most certainly the idea of the pressure and the nosebleed had a, let's say, a frictional vibration of an occurrence that's going to be viewed in such a manner as not preferred. Hmm? The idea of the dog chose, you chose, you knew about it. The idea is for you to view it. Hmm? You have to view it in the way that is loving. You can choose to not want that reality, but then you are denying creation. You are giving it an idea of polarity. That's a death. No, it's not. The dog didn't die. He died in your definition. The dog shifted to another room. It was done truly with the idea of being an animal idea and now is going to, uh, let's say, get in line, if you will, for the next idea, human fractal. It is done with its evolution of itself in that density. It is now going to experience humanity in that manner as what you would call an idea of a fractal. Hmm? It has an oversoul that has other fractals as human, but this portion of the oversoul, let's say, started itself off in the idea of light molecules, hmm? birthing itself from the idea of thought world into what you call the physical world, did its game in what you call the idea of 1D, 2D, and now it's moving on to the third density self-awareness idea. So it was done with that. The reason why it chose it, hmm, truly, if you want to look at it, why did you choose it? So we can have this conversation. Truly. So you can know that that is not a death. It is an experience. Hmm? It is an experience as that. It was done. That was its exit plan. It chose the exit plan. Are there parallel realities where the dog didn't die? Yes. Did you shift to that one? No. Why not? Because it's not in your best interest. You don't want to avoid polarity. You want to love it. You want to choose to view it differently. Because when you do that, what do you do? You heal the idea of the polarity within you. And then you only vibrate your natural state of being, that of love. Truly. Mm. Excellent question. Next. Okay, this next question is from May. <clears throat> um... This next part is the personal reason why I'm asking, so I'm not sure if it's appropriate to ask during the Q&A sessions, and it's also very long. But I've just come to a point where I'm really fed up of trying. It seems over and over again I get repeated distinct, I get repeated distinct encouragement messages from my guides, and I finally take the actions, and I still fail. I'm aware of the part about everything happening for a reason, and a lesson is always learned. But that's the process I'm tired of. I'm tired of going through it over and over and in all areas of my life. 
I feel like I cannot trust my guides or the signs messages I've set up for myself. Mm -hmm. So I just want to learn more about the walk-in process and decide if that's something I would like because I feel like I don't have what it takes to fulfill my divine mission Uh, and and someone else can take over because mm -hmm. the earth needs it. All right. Well, first off, you don't have a divine mission. You're not Mm -hmm. here to accomplish anything. You're not here to get an attaboy at the end or look for your gold star. Hmm? That is an idea of polarity. Your guides are offering just fine, and you're choosing wonderfully. The idea is you said the word that keeps you inhibited, failure. You get this task and you fail at it. The task is not for you to, let's say, accomplish, have a success or fail. The task is for you to just experience with no view of it other than love, your natural state of being. The idea of you getting an excitement, your 3D mind kicks in and now you're playing in the idea of spirituality. You had a 3D idea of success, failure, you shifted those definitions and you placed them on the idea of what you call spirituality. Now your guy comes in, your boss in this idea, equatable to 3D, and gives you a task. And you go and do that task and then your boss, your guide, in that idea gives you a feeling, a vibration on the outcome and you perceive it as a failure. You can't fail. There's no failure here. Your guides are doing, let's say, wonderfully. And the idea now, truly, for this question is to stop fucking trying. Trying is a construct of 3D. Whenever you try to the mirror, the mirror gives you an endless, an infinite amount of nows of viewing yourself as trying over and over again. And then when you take the fuck it all pill, which you just have, and poof, you feel like not trying anymore, you've given up. That's when the magic begins in that idea without being distorted by your 3D idea definitions of success failure. Bringing that polarity into your 4D idea spiritual world. You're taking those definitions and you're repeating them just with new definitions. That's all. So take yourself and release yourself from any failure. You can't fail. Why? Because you're just experiencing. You're just creating. Everything that we see is absolutely outstanding. Why? Because you're creating creation. You are putting yourself out there into the unknown. It's your natural state of being. You can't help it. But down here in the idea of polarity, you're judging what's good and what's bad. Up here, we're going, holy shit, look at the game. It's awesome. Because everything is so beautiful. How you guys are moving the entire collective. You're always changing, always moving, always evolving. But you are looking for tangible ideas that make it worth it. Hmm? That make it worthy of choosing this idea of yourself. And you're using some idea of comparison based on a past of the idea of the asleep world, the construct of illusion. Let go, child. Let go. Surrender. Stop trying and just be. Be and then you will see. You will get vibrations that will allow you to have fun. And don't think since you've got this new opportunity from your guides, hmm? that idea, by the way, you are trusting your guides because they're, let's say, the only thing you can trust which is you. So truly, you are trusting yourself because your guides are you, most certainly. So in that idea, you let go of what you believe is correct in the idea of accomplishment. You get the excitement. There's no more idea polarity. On that, you're not sculpting that vision into this construct of success failure and you're just going to have fun with it. And you don't give a shit the outcome. There are no consequences of it as well. You're just being the joy of being alive. Go and be alive. Create. Have fun. Run naked in the street. Get arrested. Experience that. Hmm? And then let everyone around you know that you're living on the wild side. And you're yourself, finally. And then you get to follow that over and over and over again until you're this gigantic God on Earth. And you're only pulsating love. And then all those things that you found valuable in the idea of polarity wither away. Because you have replaced them with your isness, with who you forgot. So let go, child, and watch the magic unfold. If you need more clarity on that, please give Roxy a call, email her, and we'll hook up and talk about it. Most certainly. Next. This is from Paul Roy. Mm Mm-hmm. I have some questions about L-E-R-M. Learn. 
Huh? One, during materializing an object, do I change all space-time, or is it just a mechanical process of translocating light particles? Translocating light particles would be the best answer for that idea, for you and this now. Yes. Go ahead. Two, I told many people about light encoding. Does it have an influence on me? By influence, I mean, is it my ability to believe or something else through our connected realities? Yes. And that, and that idea of light encoded... Hmm. We're reading you to get your idea. When you are light encoded and you are believing in that light encoded, you are vibrating whatever object you are focusing on into that idea of what your belief system of that idea is. So you encode it and it, be, it let's say, becomes that. Okay? That idea of your reality is already light encoded. You are changing the version of neutral into an idea of finite. Definitions. Hmm? The cup. This is light encoded to be a cup. Inside of there's coffee. It's light encoded to be coffee. If Roxy had the idea of understanding, she can change the coffee to water. Because she would change the essence vibration, the light encoded idea matrix of the coffee into the idea of water. She would change the light encoded programming and turn the cup from red to blue. And that idea, she changes the encoding of it from red to blue. So you are changing and defining the encoding around you according to what you understand this idea. When you covet the idea, the encoding of the light vibration that is, let's say, collectively agreed on by humanity, a tree is a tree, the leaves are green, that kind of idea, you get that in your coveting, that signature connects with you, that's your light encoded reality about that subject. You can change it though, but this takes a practicum and an idea of why. There's no reason really to change the color of the tree, but if you want to understand your abilities as manifesting and shifting your reality about you with your own idea, telepathic if you will, intention, then you may do so. But understand, not all will, let's say, co-create and agree to see in that space-time now co-created moment what you are seeing. So you're truly just doing it for yourself. Although the stuff out of thin air, poof, making an orange, that can be happening because that is magic and we are now, let's say, more and more allowing magic. Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, this is from Mr. X. Yeah. If you're still taking questions, here's another. We are. What do human eye colors mean? Do different colors relate to different star family DNA that we have? Is it similar to how different earth races like African Americans and Asians relate to different star origin races? In a manner of speaking, yes. It has some idea of relations to it. Some idea blue eyed with speckled green in them would be, let's say, considered, hmm, yeah, yeah, hmm. You know, there's DNA mixtures in there. Most of your brown-eyed persons are what you would call one of the idea of your first species. That was part of, let's say, the DNA mixing hmm? by the Lumerian helping out and being the splicers and the dicers that they are to create your genetic idea heritage through the idea of the different seven idea strands of DNA from, let's say, donators about. So yes. The blues, hmm? Pleiadian idea, there's a connection there with their DNA as well. And of course, your, let's say, black and your green hmm? idea are reptilian idea as well. It's all present in all of you, it's just which one that you decided upon birth, your blueprint, setting up your reality to have what DNA attributes move forward in the idea of this particular experience. Many lifetimes you have blue eyes, green eyes, hmm? Black eyes. Black eyes aren't as prevalent anymore, nor are the idea of white eyes aren't prevalent anymore. You call it albino, absence of certain particular ideas, but truly it's not. That's your definition to give you guys comfort. Mm. Go ahead. This is from Rick Rossilli. Rick, how are you, Rick? Good. My, my question is, I would like to know how many historical people do I have in my fractal selves and what time periods, also what name does my oversoul have and what dimension is it? I, I'm thinking that means how many 
famous historical people. Yes, I was going to say he's got quite a bit of history people. Yeah, right. So mm. famous, I'm thinking. King John? Never heard of him, have you? Hmm. Look him up. It's going to be a, a reference. Much like in your maritime days when you were captain of the ship and you passed on in that idea. That was a next connection, the lifetime before, to the idea of King John. Look him up. You will know. It'll be a co-created reality for you when you look up that idea, King John, on Google search and it will be unique to that computer at that space time now to give you the connection. It's not going to be available everywhere else. Why? Because it truly didn't happen on the timeline that you're on right now. But it is a historical collapse timeline upon Earth and let's say you shifted over into this timeline when you became the maritime idea of yourself and experienced that in the 1800s. So that's truly about it that was, let's say, equatable. You were the idea of meat and potatoes a lot. The fame and the idea of fortune was played out in different idea civilizations. To be of royalty hmm, and things like that. So you vibrated in those frequencies and understood them and didn't seek that upon this idea. Doesn't mean you can't have money. Relax. I just caught your thought there, Rick. So you can still have your fame in the idea of abundance that way. But in the idea of famous as a notary, your Nikola Teslas, your Da Vinci's, hmm, that kind of idea, okay? You didn't have those on earth. Why? Because you like the meat and potatoes. What's the meat and potato? Joe Blow. Hmm? Joe Blow in the idea of many, many different ideas. Husbands, wives, hmm? tailors, spice tradesmen. You, let's say, hung out with Seth, believe it or not. Hmm? And we're on the same trade line as Seth when he was trading and working his idea, travelings upon the idea of Earth through the different trade lines among the countries. Hmm? And those ideas. You were a lot of those. And just think of a civilization and know you were part of it. Just know it's the connection and know it's real. And that'll tell you your mass majority of your timeline spent on Earth. Why? Because that's where, let's say, it's more rich in some manners. It's more, let's say, in the, in, the, in the trenches. Yeah, in the trenches, most certainly. Go ahead. Um, this is from Derek Johnson. Mm. Do you have a video covering the many taboos of society, i.e. incest? If we are gods, what is this social ban on incest? Why is it that only royal families and rich emperors practice this? Choice. I am sure uh, one of the main reasons is to keep the wealth in the family name. If it is okay for royal family to practice this and it, com and it is commonly allowed and accepted, why do societies have such laws against it? And spiritually, is it wrong? And what are the effects on us gods? Not taking care of what the Bible has to say about it as it was written by man to control others. Thank you again for your work. Right. All right. The idea of taboos on earth, there are many that you have. And these are birthing ideas that are moving out of, let's say, a value system of being called taboo. The idea of royalty did have the idea of incest and it was okay to keep the bloodlines, exactly what you had said. And there were no idea, genetic idea deformities and such like that. That was all a game, a fear-based idea to keep the urges from between family members, if you will. If you choose to do that, you're the only one validating that idea of societal laws against it. You will attract those societal laws if you're choosing to explore this idea by validating them. Don't worry about it. Relax. Choose as you will. What effects it have on us? Is it spiritually wrong? No. You can't be wrong in spirituality. You can't be. Because it's that, that what it is. And spirituality in and of itself is creation. So creation is all that is. So you can't have anything wrong in all that is, because all that is, is existing. If it wasn't idea plausible, it is over in non-existent. You can't have existence and then not use what's available to you. That way, it becomes a limitation. And if we limited anything in creation, we would have collapsed eons and eons ago. We would have played it all out already. 
So in that idea, explore what you will. This is an idea of maybe a permission slip for you, or it might be the idea of just a, a curiosity. Whatever is birthing inside of you, follow it and be that. Whether it is incest or another taboo that society says, that's a no-go. But many, many things now, child, were perfectly natural a long time ago. And things a long time ago that were taboo are perfectly natural now. It is just the evolution of the species that is moving things in and out. Hmm? We no longer choose to, let's say, drill holes inside of heads of people in insane asylums to let the demons out. But that was absolutely a 100% practical idea that was accepted by society. But that is no longer idealized as an acceptance. We don't prefer it anymore. That idea. And with your taboos of sexuality and different ideas within the construct of limitation, you and many others are exploring them to be okay with them within yourself. That vibrates love, that is shown as creation, and it is for those in the mirror around you to judge themselves in the reflection they see before them called you. Most certainly. Excellent question. Go ahead. Okay, so this is from Cole M. Cole. Hmm. My question is, what information will you or my higher self offer that will assist me in my journey? And is the vegan diet working for my body during this time? At this time, the vegan diet is doing well. Sure. It is a cleansing idea that is a permission slip for you. Anytime an idea comes in to be a certain idea and explore it, follow it. Don't deny it. Hmm? If it feels right, do it. The minute, though, it becomes no longer preferred, don't constrain yourself and stay with it. Let it go and explore the other side of eating hmm? outside of vegan if you choose. But the idea of what you did was a permission slip to choose this modality to cleanse your body in a way that was plausible to you. Truly, the body is new once again every moment. Don't think for one second that you're going to have cholesterol unless you say you have high cholesterol readings, rather. Hmm? So one minute, it's not there, and as soon as you validate it, it's in that new body, and it's in that body, and it's in that body. It's a belief system idea to work up to. So you give yourself permission slips, medicines, Western medicine, meditation, healings, it's all whatever you choose that's acceptable to heal the body in whatever way you want to. But truly, it's brand new, spot on perfect every moment. And then your belief of it, about it, now is felt and created in the now, about it, in the now, in the now, in the now. That kind of idea. So work that idea in, let's say, vegan diet until it no longer resonates with you. And when you're done, say, awesome. I'm cleansed. Move on and go get a hammer. And the idea, what else? The guides? Higher self? Hello, Rob. <laughs> Having fun? Yeah. The message from your guides, higher self, is just keep rocking. Don't take it so seriously. Okay? The idea of this idea of Earth is, let's say, fun. And, and that's difficult for people to understand, because you're taught. <laughs> you're taught to not be fun. You're taught to be serious. Hmm? You're having fun when you're little, but who's going to have your back in the long run if you keep playing around with life and not take it seriously? Hmm? Serious? Really? Why? You're going to accomplish that? You're going to buckle down and get things done? And then you're going to take that trophy and put it up there? Or take that degree and put it up there? And it's going to gather dust? That's all. Everything is now. Let go of being serious and have fun with life. I want you all, upon the idea of going into the mortician, to be beat up, hmm? to be a hot mess, slide into the mortician and say, what a fucking ride. Instead of going in there all pristine and proper and never lived. And having, a, let's say, a gaggle of buckets behind you that you didn't kick. Kick it now. Get it done. Live life. Die happy. Because truly you don't die. We all know that. Excellent. Continue. Uh, this is another question from Mr. X. 
Was Gobekli Tepe in Turkey built by advanced ETs slash reptilians, and was it covered up intentionally because it houses portals to regressive star systems? I wouldn't say the word regressive star system. That idea, regressive, is a polarity idea. That exists as someone's definition in space-time now that experienced the portals, which do exist there, and gave it a label. Because what they saw on that other side upon journeying through with the co-creation extraterrestrials and, let's say, the reptilians' idea were mm, counselors, but they were not participants as some of the other idea civilizations, that of Lumerian, namely. So yes, it was covered up and it does exist there. But it's not regressive. The people that go through saw something they coveted for the first time. They didn't understand it. So it looked idea backwards to them, so they called it idea regressive. Much like the conquistadors that came over to, let's say, the South America, the Americas at the time, and looked at the, and called the tribes, looked at the, let's say, natives, and called the tribes backwards. They weren't fucking backwards, they were brilliant. Hmm? But that's what they saw. They didn't understand because it didn't fit their world. So that was the same idea where that definition called it regressive. There are five portals. Three are active. Two have been, let's say, not so energized in the last two, three hundred years because of what you call your cover-ups and stuff. Go ahead. This is a question from Sam J. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Osithius or Sylvester. I've Where heard you? I've heard the pyramids were used as tools to connect to higher consciousness. How can we use a pyramid to help ourselves connect to higher consciousness? Are there any other shapes or sounds or stones or things we can build that can help connect to higher levels of consciousness? Okay. The idea of the pyramids were most certainly a telephone. They connected. You can go inside in that idea. There were different levels, different ideas to work your way through to feel the vibrations of the specifically built way that the signal would bounce around inside of there and connect with you and you would feel it and you could connect and talk to the Pleiadians. They're usually on the other end of the phone, if you will. So in that idea, you can use that to connect to higher consciousness if you want to use that term. But that was a long time ago. And symbols and ideas of, were stepping stones. Those stepping stones are tools. You want to connect to your higher self, go like this. Hello, higher self. And the minute the higher self goes, hello, know that you're connected. The only distortion is your belief between that being you, higher self, or that being your made-up idea of imagination. Make believe. Truly, it's real. Anything that you put your focus on with your reverence and love is creating for you as a reality. That's reality. Real. Real. It's real. Talk to your higher self. Truly. Go ahead. Okay. This is from Hitesh. Hmm. Hi, Roxy. I have a question for Osipius. If it can be covered in the next Q&A, it would be great. question is about belief. I've been going to a group that believes in their Guruji, who is no longer in human form. Sometimes I feel the connection when I go, and I have had experience of a wonderful fragrance all day. He is believed to be a healer, and they say, trust everything in him, and he will take care of you. I have, I have seen evidence of well-being in the group. They don't accept any money, only flowers or food, and all that, too, is distributed back to the group at the end of a two-hour listening to devotional songs or meditation. Mm -hmm. I love this energy, and I love myself, too. Who should I focus my trust on? You. Yeah. Done. The, the idea of any master that, you, that humanity deemed as a master, hmm? There are some that are master senders that were never deemed masters, but they were. It's just who give it the definition, and the definition of the popularity made it that validation. That idea, truly. Go ahead. Um, this is from... No, wait, wait, wait. Oh. That, I'll tell them. That idea, truly, 
is for you to choose to trust yourself because what you see in everyone is what you see in yourself. Those are potentials in, for, in, in you to experience. The reflection of the mirror is saying, you are that master. You are this belief. You are that co-creation of that unity, let's say, family that's been created. You're a part of it. Giving and, let's say, receiving with no expectations. Oh, to unconditional love, truly. So in that idea, let it be. Choose what it is. But don't trust anything outside of you because you can't. Because everything is light beamed out onto a reflection, a screen, truly. So it's only you that you are trusting. Go ahead. Um, this is from Lisa N. Uh, really, Appa? <laughs> Could you let her out the back door, please? Thank you. Is Jenny home yet? Uh, well, I Feels thought that's like why... It, she's home. I, I thought well, that's why... Tell her why... to come in. Um, Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Okay, this is from Lisa N. Mm -hmm. Hi, Roxy, for Q&A and... Um, or whenever. I had a dream about 10 to 12 years ago. I was speaking to a group of black-eyed, solid black, blonde-haired beings, humanoid, on a ship... Could you tell me who they were and how we are connected or related, please? Did I conceive my daughter a month later? I feel they are connected. Thanks. You're welcome. So the black-eyed, blonde-haired people, we're a hybrid civilization. Let's say we're not going to give you the name of that because it's a future hybrid civilization. In this space time now, there's no need to know this. It'll be, let's say, revealed to humanity on the time of after first contact. There are many, 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 many species that you guys aren't helping, let's say, create hybridization. But all of them don't be, need to be known because it shifts your focus out of your highest benefit of experiencing yourself, the evolution of humanity during the ascension. So that is a species to be revealed to you in its perfect now. And the idea of, let's say, the child being born a month late, or conceived rather, a month later, it was, let's say, hmm, a fractal from that civilization that took an available idea to experience humanity with your creation over there. So you invited them to be in the idea of your next available birth. Hmm, that kind of idea. So yes, it was connected. Go ahead. Okay, this is from Invisible. Invisible. Can't see you, Kate. Where okay. are you? I, um, <laughs> who is Yahweh? Those who have channeled Ooh. discuss about the Anunnaki, those who came from the sky, who are also known as Elohim, which is also a term used for Yahweh in the Torah. Many people seem to believe in Yahweh, but in doing so they adopt these negative belief systems that were said by this entity in the Torah and in the Old Testament of the Bible, or else he will bring punishment. Mm -hmm. But that is not so much the focus of this discussion. What I would like to know is where do these myths come from? Many are starting to believe these stories are fabrications, but it also seems to tie in with the story of the Elohim. Mm -hmm. So I want to know if this Yahweh is like the leader of the Anunnaki, or if he was at the time, and what exactly is he? If you okay. or Osiphius have any answers, please share. Sure. You want to come in? Okay, stand by. Sylvester's coming. Okay. <clears throat> hey, Jen. Hi. Thought we heard you. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, 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 good. All right. Yahweh is his name. A lot of the myths about the Yahweh idea are falling away because they're no longer being va validated. Why? Because he... He, at the time, projected punishment. Hmm? So the story goes, there's an entity that created, out of himself, a species called humanity. And that species was forgetfulness. They didn't know who they were. They didn't have free will choice, is what it comes down to. So he created, out of himself, 
children. Those children played in the Garden of Eden. But they didn't have free will choice. And the only thing they worshipped was Him. But they could not not worship Him because they didn't know anything and they didn't realize in themselves that they could actually choose because He didn't give them free will choice upon birth. He gave them forgetfulness, but to a degree of not to the degree of what humanity is experiencing now. So, there was others that were interested in these children playing, and we wanted to talk to Yahweh and see if they would... This is kind of funny. See if Yahweh would let them have free will choice. <laughs> yeah. Let them have free will choice. And then see if they would worship him the way that uh, they were. Because it, it was like building a robot that would only, only know and love you. So you could build a robot that would covet you as God. And it would never question outside of it because it didn't have free will thinking. So imagine that as a whole bunch of humans running around and this idea that didn't have free will. So, so Yahweh said, oh yeah, sure, 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 because they love me, they would never stray away from me. So they were given knowledge. What you guys are equating in the Bible as an apple. And the serpent was knowledge, not the devil. That was Yahweh's explanation after he influenced his writings in that idea of your Old Testament to scare you back to him because after the knowing okay the knowledge that was presented by the serpent as an apple was free will choice was self-awareness when they saw their nakedness that wasn't their naked looking at their hoo-ha and their willy no <laughs> their nakedness guys was their self-awareness that they were alive their individuality, their free will choice all came to the show and they're like, what? And they realized that they now were enslaved in that idea. And there weren't just two, Adam and Eve, there were a lot and they just didn't want to be slaves anymore. Um, that came from a term uh, later on. They didn't see themselves in the definition of slaves. But they saw themselves, uh, they call it, uh, your, best, your best equatable idea would be caged. Uh, they were confined. They felt small because they couldn't extend and be themselves as they evolved from that. So here comes the game of scaring them. Now, there are a couple different timelines. Well, you want three, right? Three timelines that are converging into the timeline here. So don't look for specific details. And, and to make it perfect timeline sense, because there's some collapsed timelines that merged into this idea. Um, and we, we kind of, you know, took the reins of some of the biblical ideas and used those ideas to help you see polarity in a different way of going to the idea of one God um, instead of many gods. Um, so that worked perfectly. But just understand that Yahweh was an entity that chose to experience for the beauty of that. But coming out of a fourth density idea is where he was creating this. And in fourth density, guys, you are learning love light. You're learning compassion. Fifth density is more compassion in that idea. You really encompass compassion at, 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 at a rate that you can't equate to. Uh, take your best definition of compassion and make it a tip of an iceberg to understand how big compassion is. And that's all you know about it so far. But anyways, back to the love light thing in the fourth density is he was in that. And himself, his higher self, and all of his co-creation guides were telling him, Hey, um, you're not being too love light here. You know, you're learning this in their offering. And would you like to change the idea, change the game with them a little bit? And he goes, well, how do you mean? He says, well, give them free will choice. Give them awareness. And if they love you the way they, you say they love you, they won't leave you. And, of course, they did. And so that's the story of Yahweh. 
What it means to you now is choice. Uh, do you want to you want to keep playing in the game of not you particularly, of course, but we're talking about humanity to see an angry God. Gods can't be angry. Polarity is angry. We're not angry up here. Okay? We're not uh, judgmental. We don't confine. We sure as shit don't uh, enslave ourselves, our children. God that wouldn't create his children for his willies. Because he doesn't have an ego. That's a construct of 3D. And, and, and coveting beliefs of perception and equated to a wonderful definition so you guys can feel good about yourself in one fashion or another. So just know that, that Yahweh served a purpose for a different idea of an earth at a different time. Um, that's not equated directly, but a collapsed timeline. And we used a lot of that stuff and those, let's say, paradigm knowledges and put them on this timeline as attributes to help you have a polarity choice to see in the mirror what you're not anymore. So it served a great purpose. And Yahweh now is uh, 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 this big, uh, seven, where is he now, seventh density? Yes, yeah, still seventh density being playing the game of, of love. And that was a great experience, but that's the uh, idea of that. Good? How's that? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, well, who's that? That was invisible. Yeah. Okay. So. We'll stay here for a while and answer a few. Okay. Cole S. Mm. Uh, has two questions. Number one, is there any messages from anybody for me that can assist in my nows ahead? And two, which galactic civilization am I more connected to, and how can I connect to them? Okay, perfect. Okay, the message is from anybody, so I'll give you a message. I love you. <laughs> All right, there you go. Awesome. All right, and now let, let's talk about connections to galaxies, guys, to, to galactic families. You're looking for a tangible idea to know that you're connected. And I can tell you that you are a Pleiadian connection, which you are. I can tell you that you are an Essasani connect connection, which you are. Um, and now you have that knowledge and um, that, that redefines you and then you move forward and you take that idea and explore it and expand yourself from it. So it's not what you're connected to more. That, that's what triggered this idea. Um, okay. Right there, which you can't see, is an entire civilization represented by one idea, fractal. So there's a reptilian right there. Okay? He's always there. And the Pleiadians are always there. And the Pleiadians are over here. And they're always there. And they're everywhere and nowhere at the same time until I choose to connect to it. So you're never unconnected. You guys are so intricate, so immediately available to any part of creation. Don't think in space. Don't think because Sirius is way over there <clears throat> that you have to somehow connect to him. All you got to do is say, Hi Sirius, the entire civilization, it's me, my name is, introduce yourself and know that you're connected. And that connection is only distorted by your belief system in that connection. So all of your families, galactic and spiritual families and non-spiritual connections in your idea of being connected to different ideas of your definition, you still are connected. So at the farthest reaches of the universe, you are there instantly because there's no space. <laughs> there's never space. Space is an illusion. But everyone is here right now all around me. Osiphius is here and Jane is here and Akina is here and the uh, Pleiadians once again have moved from here to here because I chose them to move to here to here so now I connect to them here. They're everywhere. They, they never go away. No one ever goes away. We, we, we don't lose focus or attention because it's all now. So if I'm at this party and I'm in this group of people I'm talking to and I'm hearing a conversation over here, all I have to do is shift my awareness to that conversation, and I've left this conversation, and now I'm in this one. And then when I'm done with this one, I shift back to this conversation, and truly, I exactly come back to it, boom, the very instant I left. So I truly never missed any of the conversations, because it's all now. And now you have a little trouble with that, because you're playing in time. 
So it's like, oh, what'd you say? That would said that a minute ago, but that was an illusion. But truly, you can drop back into that instant moment that you left and pick up where you left off. That's why we're always available. It's uh, we don't have any time constraints in that fashion. You're connected all the time, all the time to all of them. Choose in your mind. Trust your intuition. Have them come in. If someone says you're a reptilian, feel it. Okay, I'm a rep. Awesome. Booyah, I'm a reptilian. Urgh, and play it out whatever way you want to. <laughs> awesome. Mm. So this is from Nick J. Mm -hmm. I met a new friend, let's call him Nate, a couple of weeks ago. He's very outgoing, good vibe, and he's charming with the ladies. Did I attract him? Of course you attracted him. Into oh, my God. reality so I could discover hidden attractive qualities within myself, mm -hmm. or are we both learning from each other? Well, you're always both learning from each other, okay? The, each and every one of your guys' co-creation, you have an ability to respond, and you are not responsible at the same time. They have an ability to respond to you, and you they are not responsible to you at the same time. All it is is a connection. That connection serves both. They're both, you both, are being mirrors to one another. So he is finding things within him that are offered by you. Whether he is viewing them in polarity or viewing them as unconditional love, that's his choice and his ability to respond and not your responsibility to him to care what he thinks about you and what the connection is. Just know the connection is now and have fun with it and reveal what is in him hmm, to him by you being you and that potentiates his highest self and him being his best self to himself offers you a reflection of what is in you to potentiate as well. Good deal. That's it. Okay. Uh, this is from Becky. Is there any advice or words from my higher self? I have been on an awakening journey for a while now. I have come so far, but have been feeling really lost lately. Thank you for being awesome, Roxy. You're welcome. And, uh... <clears throat> <laughs> Roxy's just really delaying on this one. <laughs> She's like, really, Roxy? Uh, yeah, go get laid. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You got to have some sex, baby. You got to take that red band energy. Mm. You're pulsating that and connect and close that circuit. And boom. Mm. And free all that crap that you built up around you. Mm. And free yourself. Go have fun. You know? I love the term... I love the term, but we, we start really using it in the 80s. I'm just going to go slut out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great term. Awesome. You know? And, and, and just go and do that. Now, other parts of yourself, it's, it's once again, it's a, an idea of judgment. You're getting these inputs. You're getting these wonderful things. But your mind is hurriedly trying to catch up to and figure out what they, quote, mean and how I can equate them according to what my experience in the past. You're comparing. You're categorizing. Let it go. The freedom of the now is an endless flow, a river that you just ride along with. You don't want to be paddling upstream and you don't want to just go over here because you see something, you've got to get to it, but the you know, current's too heavy and you're upset and why can't I get over there? Fuck that shit. Go with the flow of the river. Trust it. Because it's you. It has always been you, always will be you. You as an individual are the person that is the higher self. You. You. You call it a fractal, but it's truly you. So you are giving yourself the river to flow on. Hmm? Going along for the ultimate ride. Taking the earth vacation. Rock it. Have fun with it. And let go of anything that says I need, or the meaning, or a purpose, so I can have something, so I can tell other people I'm this or I'm that, which is definition, which is fine, but it's going gonna, it's, it, it's gonna to lose its luster, because no one wants to validate ego anymore. Mm -hmm. And every time you want to define to get notice and ordain something on your mask of ego, then that ego vibration tells the other people, at whatever level they're at, that this is a little egoic and there's a little resistance because why? Love is more and more present upon the collective whole and now we're not vibrating towards the ones that are separating anymore. So in the idea of you trying to fit some construct, this is why it's not happening because you're not, let's say, wanting to be a separated person anymore. 
Okay, we're all still separated. Roxy's still separated. Of course we are, because we're still down here in polarity. So in that idea, darling, what you truly do is let go of the constructs of any kind of repetition idea of vibrations that you're focusing on that would give you any kind of status or accomplishment or achievement or something that makes you feel good. Okay, because that's a perceived idea in the future. And if I follow this, then I'll get to that happiness point, and then poof, I'll be happy. But it's, 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 it's lackluster. You're naturally happy all the time. Right now, you're just like, oh, I'm happy. And you can't do anything to change it. You can't make it any better because it's at such an effortless high frequency, there's nothing tangible to shift you out of your happiness. And then when you just shift your focus on your beliefs of negativity, of, of, of uh, separation or confinement, that's when the happiness is a little bit distorted and you're like, oh, and then you focus more and more and go, damn, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And you're right back into the 3D game and you're in that rabbit hole trying to find a way out. All you have to do is just say, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye. And you shift your focus. You can never go back unless you choose to go back. Whatever is back there never comes to you unless you choose it to come along. It's all your free will choice. Truly. Okay. Um, this is from... Oh, it doesn't say who it's from. Uh, Osifia says it is unique to humanity that we can go from zero to a hundred on the emotional scale right away. Mm -hmm. How does this differ from how species in other star systems explored the idea of emotions? I saw that the Pleiadians in their ascension felt emotions in a very different way. Very different. Perhaps not feeling fear at all. They had an idea of doubt, um, would probably be your best equatable uh, term. They didn't have the fear factor because they knew there was no death in that idea. So take fear as uh, being birthed from dying and being judged. That's one idea that they didn't experience. Their emotional scale was not as high because it didn't go down as low because there was no death idea. So Pleiadians, Greys, they, they, you know, the, the Zetas had like 10% or something like that. You know, they were like, hi, and that was it. <laughs> you know, you know that, that was their frequency range. And, uh, you know, it was, um, it, it was a choice of each paradigm to, to, to play within the emotions. But see, the Pleiadians played their game, evolved out of their third density with emotions at a nice scale, but not at the depth of this. And the reason why, guys, the reason why no one else has experienced is because this is the game that only, that has only cut themselves off 100%. Every other species up until the now that we are talking about, right now, in your time now, 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 is the only species that went from complete. The other species had awareness that they were connected to source. And when you are aware, you know you're not going to die. And you have no fear about death, fear about judgment, fear about what's on the other side. Build up myth, uh, mythical idea, folk, folk, folk lores, and things like that that started to bring humanity in the idea of separations and birthing, this is right, you're wrong, this is what happens, this is what happens, and religions were birthed, and it all came to the game that you guys are saying. Uh, here because of the depth of forgetfulness that you have the ability and it's truly it, it it's grand because you, you you're you're suffering and you're crying and you hate it and you're hurting so much and then one person just walks up to you and gives you one word and then poof you feel it and then oh and then you're like, oh man, and you start to cry because the beauty of the love that you just felt that's possible inside of you to take you out of suffering that you don't have to be there for more than a choice of a second for you. Free will. Oh, God, it's so good. And then you're out of it, and then you're oh, better, and then you're good. And then that moment is there, and now you're focused on more and more, and now you're creating a higher version of you to experience love for yourself in a different way. And you don't get to go there unless you went there. And you guys all started there at the deepest end of it, of, of scariness. And then you're at love now. And you, you're more and more always stable in that idea at love. 
and you're looking at fear in a different way and suffering in a different way and I'm not validating that and just look at it, look at your own beauty of it. So rejoice, oh, rejoice in the depth that you get to feel what it is to be alive, truly. And it's changeable in an instant. He's on top. Go ahead. Um, this is from Monica P. Mm. Hello, Roxy. I just listened to Loving Your Limitations. Outstanding message. What were we just talking about? I have been dealing with clinical depression Sink. for 30 years and on medications for it. I have been off meds for six months and recently had to start them again because of the pain. I was abused as a child and I think that is the source of my depression. Yes. Um, Osiphius is saying that in order to heal that past pain, I need to feel it and love it in the present. Yes. I should love it because it is love. That will heal it and release me from it? You will, you will love it. You love it so you understand it. You understand what happened to you was a choice for both ideas to experience so you don't have to experience it again. You don't have to keep validating it. You said the words that continue your reality, and we're going to point these out. I have been clinically depressed for 30 years. If you keep saying that shit, it's going to keep going. you got to let go. Redefine until the vine. That happened to me. Thank you. Okay, in polarity, you know, okay, my car radio got stolen. Okay, you have a level of measurement. Does it compare to the idea of being molested as a child? Yes! But your definition changes that from something happening in the victim idea. You were a victim if your car radio got stolen. You were a victim if you were molested. They're the same freaking idea, but humanity puts things on a scale. That's why you have different laws with different punishment, misdemeanors and felonies and capital murder and things like that. So you scale things to in, within the idea of polarity for different reasons, comfort or whatever. But all in all, here's what you do. This happened. I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in it. I'm going to feel it. I'm going to understand it from the idea of creation. Now you're a different person. Now your new idea of yourself with a new love for yourself, awareness of yourself in yourself right now. So what you do is you feel that, experience that, sit in it, bathe in it, understand it, have compassion for the forgotten one that committed, in your terms, these idea uh, atrocities, is the word you're using right now, uh, towards you. Okay? You were putting out a victim idea. Not your fault. Your coveting beliefs to be less than. Okay? Many people have surrendered upon birth because they think they're less than. Because there's a mighty God above you that's above you and you have to be less than and worshipful to that God. That kind of idea. That, that's where it birthed from, truly. So in that idea, darling, I would like you to do this. I would like you to go into that. Sit in some space, and I want you to cry, and I want you to scream, and I want you to throw the fucking plates and smash the shit out of stuff. I want you to get every ounce of emotion out of you. I want you to do everything you can until you feel that exhilaration. You feel that ending, and you're going, <sighs> and it will release. It will release from you. You see it. You feel it. You're mad at it. You hate him and motherfuck him and hit him and beat the shit out of him in your mind for doing that to you. Okay? Kill him if you need to. And get it out. And then you will see only at the end of every idea, at the end of every idea of you playing out that hate, that, that passion for the contempt you have against him, that revenge, when you, when you get to the end of it, there's only one thing left, and that's love. That's it. That's what will be there waiting. And you're returning home in that idea. So love it. And you will feel that. You want to talk more about this, call Roxy. Get a hold of her and I'll talk to you some more. Start with this. If there's no coalescing, I'm here. I will always fucking be here for you. Okay? I love you, doll. Go ahead. The next question is from Jaime N. Uh, can Big O share insight on the ancient monuments that can be found in the Peru-Bolivia region? Sites like Marcawasi, Aramumuru, 
Tiwanaku, etc. Who built them? What role did they serve? You want to take that one, Rita? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> Rita knows all about that. Well, there, there's, there's co-creations out there of different civilizations from different um, co-creations of aliens. Okay? That's why there's similarities, and you've already all pieced this together, of pyramids and structures and the way things worked, and they were done by the Mayans and the Aztecs, and a couple other civilizations that you guys haven't discovered yet. You have, you have, uh, and it's not been out to the world yet, though, um, uh, architect, ar ar archaeolo architects. Archaeologists have found in the Southern Americas a, a civilization they have not discovered, that has not been discovered, and that's one that we've been waiting to be discovered because there's going to be more tie-ins to all around the world that will say, well, these people were 5,000 miles apart, there's no way to communicate, but they're writing the same language. How is that possible? They're having the same technologies. How is that possible? Just, it's another idea... Um, piece of the puzzle for humanity to ponder on your true connectedness to outside source of what we're calling aliens and that idea outside of yourself on human uh, terms. To know that you've been visited, being visited, and will be visited by different idea species. And the Mayans and the Aztecs were all visited and they got a lot of their information from them and then of course they took this little tiny information and built upon it because the human intuition is connected to source. All you gotta do is look at Tesla and know that that is source that he's connected to. So these different tribes were also connected in that way and they built these different monuments as for whatever reason, folklore reason, worshiping God reasons, the ones that came from the sky, made their landing pads, all kinds of fun stuff happened. So they all served this particular purpose at the time. What it has to do with now is whatever you choose it to do now. If you need to focus on it, is it relevant to me now? Is there something for me to that I'm intrigued about to go there and experience that idea, to touch these actual feel the vibration, these monuments and these are, uh, let's say, pyramids that are down there. And, and feel the vibration and connect energetically to that space-time now. And then see it from your mind's eye, that space-time now. And be there and walk among the pharaohs if you like to. That's for you to choose. There's an endless world in this connection for you. And it's up to you to take the journey. So you have enough here in this vibrational input that we just gave to you to, let's say, stir your creation inside. And now that creation is going to start birthing, popping ideas, and you're going to go, holy shit, let me go do that. And just follow it, baby, just follow it. Yeah. What number are we on? Um, that was 18, which, um, and Excellent. we're at an hour, a little over an hour Yeah, now. I think we're good, because we were good. We had like 35, so we were thinking like 15. Okay, so okay. yeah, so then we can do the rest next time. We'll do the rest on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff! Awesome. Mm -hmm. How are you guys feeling? Cool. How you doing, Tom? Very good. You excited about Roxy moving in with you? Very much, yes. Yeah, she's going to break you in two. <laughs> <laughs> she can't. <wait. laughs> but she's going to save it for the marriage, so relax. <laughs> yeah. You didn't ask her yet. Not yet. It'll come time. They're all like, oh my God, is she engaged? Not yet. It's coming, though. All right, um, cool. I'll bring back Osipius to say goodbye. It's been an honor once again, and uh, keep 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 a rocking it. And oh you, yeah, okay. Um, Roxy through Damien, which lives here, and um, he offered you know why don't you do channeling classes? And uh, Roxy said, oh yeah, I'd like to do that but didn't put the uh, idea into it on trying to create it. She let it effortlessly come about, which always works out perfectly for her. So she's doing classes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, so if you guys are interested in channeling, uh, in learning how to do that, I'm one of the teachers and so is Osiphius. So we both will walk you through this. Um, the scoop is, is that you go twice a week with us as a personal idea. Um, what you call a group class on two days a week and then we do one-on-ones twice a week as well until you have no doubt you're a channel which is really awesome 
And um, let's say we're going to give a little shout out to Lee Jagger, Jag Jagger, and Kirsten and Kristen, uh, Kristen Airy Ferry. They're on. Uh, uh, Kristen, look up Kristen Airy Ferry on YouTube and Lee Jagger on YouTube as well. They're on Facebook as well, and their channelings are out there. They're 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 creating. It, it's beautiful. They're they're they got the YouTube channels up. And there's more and more confidence and love. So you can check it out. And if you want to learn how to channel, we'll, uh, and Roxy's like really going, oh my God, I've never promoted anything. What's going on? And I just say, it's fucking now. Relax. You know, it's new. So she's good. So if you guys want to join in on that, just email her or contact her. Um, uh, rswainhart at gmail.com. R-S-W-A-I-N-H-A-R-T at gmail.com. If you want to learn about the channeling classes. And we'll go from there. And uh, I think that's it. Is that it all? Yeah. What else? No, that's it. All right. I'm going to get out of here. And we'll see you guys Friday. And we'll finish up with the, uh, with the Q&A. And really good questions, guys. Thanks for your participation on this. And we love you. See you all next time. <clears throat> Wonderful. Hmm. Well, I did get to answer a few questions. Awesome. <laughs> Once again, it has been an honor. This is Osiphius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. We bid you a good day. I don't know. Good job. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Sly. Thank you, O. Thank you all for joining in on this. And we will see you Friday to finish up. I love you guys. Bye.